I tell my students that the more I teach about structures, the more interesting I find it. The nuances of how valence electron locations determine chemical properties which form these structures, then once the structures are formed, the arrangement of the particles in three-dimensional space determines a lot of physical properties like melting point and boiling point and vapor pressure. So really neat stuff. And what we're going to do right now is come up with some of our two-dimensional representations of these structures using our electron dot notation. All right. So as a reminder from electron dot notation, um, we're going to now do electron dot structures. And that has a very straightforward plan. All right. For electron dot structures, we're going to use dots representing valence electrons. And we're going to pair up dots. We're going to share them. And our goal is eight dots. All right. So we're going to pair up. our dots with other atoms to get eight total. All right, and I just spazzed my head into this camera. Hopefully it stayed the correct orientation. And I'm just gonna leave a little room right here because I'm gonna jump right into Lewis structures. And you may have heard me mention previously like everything you do is gonna end up being at least starting with Lewis structures. Electron dot is kind of just a stop along the way. So I'm going to leave myself um, maybe two lines for Lewis structures. I'll just write right now Lewis structures. All right, and if the idea here is pairing up, the idea here is connecting the dots. Take a deep breath here. The skills you need are not major. You need to be able to look at the periodic table to get a symbol. You need to be able to count across to figure out how many dots you have. And then you eventually need to be able to connect the dots. All right? It is, that's it. Those are the skills you need. Look at the periodic table, count, and connect dots. That is what we're looking at. So I will go back here and talk about Lewis structures once we've drawn some electron dot structures for things. And let's start with something we saw previously, and that is water. So the way I'm going to set this up, just so we plan ahead a little bit, give myself, you know, two or three lines right there. Divide the page. I'm going to need uh, these things. So for our example here, I want us to write the electron dot structure and the Lewis structure for each compound. All right, so I'm gonna need some room here for the electron dot structure, and then I'm gonna need some room here for the Lewis structure. I'm debating if I wanna get double on these, but we'll just draw them huge and save ourselves some confusion. All right, I think a compound I always like to start with because it's something people are familiar with, and there's a bit of foreshadowing already in your brain, is H2O, okay? So, let's say, H2. And you'll notice I'm trying to be attentive to these colors because what I'm going to do is try and color code the electrons so when we're pa pairing up the dots, it makes sense. All right, so how do I do it? Well, I told you there's a couple skills we need, one of which is reading the periodic table. Okay, there's hydrogen. Okay, there's oxygen. Hydrogen gets one dot. It's in group one. Oxygen gets six dots. It's in group 16. Those are our valence electrons. So from, I'll draw the oxygen first because I only need one of them. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One dot on each side before any side gets two. All right. And I'm going to save you so much stress. I'm just going to hop over to a separate piece of paper here. I'm going to save you so much stress by clarifying for you that these dots, it does not matter where they are, it just matters 
how many pairs and how many singles you have. All right, I can't find another green marker, so we'll go with this. So we've got our oxygen here, and we have to have six. It could be one, two, three, four, five, six. That is the same as one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Or one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah? Those all mean the same thing. You can, in fact, like if you really wanted to, but I don't think people really do this, you could say like, oh, there's oxygen with one, two, one, two, one, one, all right? Nobody's gonna do that, except me when I'm trolling you, but uh, this is totally fine. It does not matter where the dots are. All that matters is the number of single dots and the number of pairs of dots that you have, because pairs of dots aren't gonna bond, single dots are gonna bond. So it just matters as you look at this to see, oh, two potential bonding locations, two non-potential bonding locations, which is the same here and here and here. Lewis structures, man, I gotta find this piece of paper. All right. Lewis structures and electron dot structures do not represent how things are arranged. They're just showing what is bonded to what. Huge, huge deal, all right? You can put the electrons wherever you want to, just keep track of pairs and singles, all right? That's important life advice as you're drawing structures. All right, so I drew it like that just for convenience sake. The hydrogens here, hydrogen we had said is in group one of the periodic table. It's going to have one valence electron. And so I'll put one of my hydrogens here because our goal is to pair up dots, right? There's the hydrogen, it had one dot. Oh look, things are paired up, right? And so at this point, hydrogen has two, which is what it needs. That's a full octet, right? A full set of valence sublevels, just the S there. Now I have another single dot here, which I expect to be a potential bonding location. So I'm going to draw my hydrogen and it has one electron. It's in group one of the periodic table, boom. And we get oxygen now has our goal, which was eight total dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the hydrogen's full octet as two electrons. And there we go, that's it, all right? Now, right off the bat, I wanna jump into the Lewis structure and I'm laughing because um, it's not much of a jump from here to Lewis structures. So for your Lewis structure, um, you're gonna have pairs of dots representing non-bonding pairs. Equal non-bonding pairs. And instead of having dots representing plain old valence electrons, we're going to have lines that represent bonding pairs of electrons. All right. If you are intimidated by this idea of what we were about to see with Lewis structures, don't be, all right? Non-bonding pairs are gonna be pairs of dots. Okay, I have a pair of dots. I have a pair of dots. Oh, I have a pair of dots, but that pair of dots is bonding, so I'm just gonna draw it as a line. And yes, it is that easy. This is not a trap, okay? Two non-bonding pairs, and we're going to bond our hydrogens like that. So what I will end up doing and what you often hear me saying is just like, it's connect the dots, okay? And I'll do that kind of separately on a piece of paper here just so you can kind of see. If I look at this, I've got, I know this red marker doesn't work. If I look at oxygen, dot, 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 group 16 of the periodic table, six dots, one on each side before any side gets two. I see two potential bonding locations. Hydrogen, group one of the periodic table, one potential bonding location, and I am just connecting the dots, all right? Hydrogen, one potential bonding location, I am just connecting the dots, all right? So looking at the periodic table, counting up a number of dots, and connecting the dots is really our skill here. And I had an uh, interesting experience in class because I was like, oh, and everybody has seen this before in biology class. And everybody's like, no, we haven't. And then I was like, wait, how about now? And then everybody's like, oh yeah, that's exactly how we see water. 
in our other classes. And we've seen water like this a million times. Well, that is exactly the same thing as this, same thing as this. In fact, if uh, you want to be a real jerk, which I do to try and kind of drive home the point of arrangement, oxygen, like H, H, pair, pair, that's, that's okay. As long as you're showing two things attached and two non-bonding pairs, that's okay for a Lewis structure. We're not showing geometry. Now be careful, because very often there'll be a slight difference that you can't even catch. But this bond angle here, if you arrange it as something greater than 90, around 109 and a half, then you can actually treat this Lewis structure as a 3D structure. All right, not worried about that right now. Do take into consideration that we can draw them in any arrangement as long as we're showing two things attached and two non-bonding pairs. And all we did was take our pairs of dots and connect them. So I know it seems like electron dot structures, why bother at all? And the answer is because it helps you understand that there are dots. We've heard it and we can do Lewis structures for everything, yeah? <clears throat> Let's try some more Lewis structures for things. And then um, we'll look into breaking the octet rule as necessary and things like resonance. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm about to overuse the next example just so I can get a variety of structures. <clears throat> and you can see the differences in how they work. So I'm gonna draw a line here, and I'll probably do the other one on separate paper. But for right now, we're gonna pick something easy, methane gas, natural gas. If you have a gas hot water heater, or a gas stove, or a gas dryer in your house, natural gas is methane, CH4, it's colorless and odorless. They put something in there to make it stink, so no, you know when you have a gas leak, we're captain. But anyway, CH4, I need a plan. My plan is going to be to Find these things on the periodic table so I know how many dots to put. And I'd like to point out that I already screwed up my color coding. <clears throat> Here is carbon. It's going to have four dots. Here is hydrogen. It's going to have one dot. All right. Oh, I just ruined this piece of paper. I've been trying to leave the large Sharpies for the top so I can flip the paper and write on the back. All right. Carbon, we declared moments ago. One, two, three, four four dots, one on each side before any side gets two. I see four potential bonding locations. I see that I need to attach four things. That is not a surprise at all, all right? In order for this to exist, then it has to work in one way or another. So there's that. My hydrogens each have one valence electron, group one, one dot. And so in each of these potential bonding locations, the hydrogens bring in one dot and we have our electron dot structure. Now, carbon, we're our goal here, eight total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hydrogen two was our goal. <clears throat> and over here, if we want to draw the Lewis structure for that, I'll draw the carbon. Uh, I'm gonna preemptively draw the line. This isn't really how I do it, but I'll show you in a second. I know I'm gonna have four lines because I've got four things there and I'll add on my four hydrogens. And I know that like, we like to write it that way because there's good symmetry. Uh, this is actually kind of meaningless this way because that's not what CH4 looks like. It's, they're not arranged that way, but this tricks you into thinking they're arranged that way. So be very, very careful. Um, so this is a situation where very often you'll see me um, off to the side, be like, or you could have drawn it carbon, hydrogen, 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 all right? I know you don't like that, but that discomfort may remind you that Lewis structures don't tell you how they're arranged. This is just as valid as this in terms of a Lewis structure. It's telling you what is bonded to what and how many non-bonding pairs you have. It's not telling you a geometry, all right? So this is fine, this is fine. Whatever you want to do, carbon, hydrogen, 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 whatever uncomfortable scenario you want to draw out, as long as it's got four things attached and no non-bonding pairs, that's totally okay for a Lewis structure. I'm gonna hop over to some other paper just so I'm not wasting too much. And we'll look at some similar compounds to CH4, meaning we've got carbon with four things attached. And the first one I'm gonna look at is something we'll say CF4. And I'm going to skip the electron dot structure because uh, I think it's useful for you to see how I really do these, which is just connecting dots. I look at the periodic table. Carbon gets four dots. 
fluorine is in group 17, it gets seven dots. Now let's go with this color here. So I'm just gonna mention off to the side here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three pairs in a single, okay? So fluorine, I'm gonna line up that single dot so that I can connect the dots easily. Fluorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my bond, all right? Now when I do it, I'm gonna line up the single dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, connect the dots. Fluorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, had seven, connect the dots. And then fluorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, connected the dots, all right? So I think it's very easy to just mentally bypass the electron dot structure. It literally is just like line up the single dots and then connect them. Now what is different between this and this, <clears throat> well, a bunch of extra dots. And why is that? Well, hydrogen only needs two valence electrons to fill its valence orbitals. It just has a 1s, there's no 1p. Something like fluorine, though, has that 2p in it, so it has to have a total of eight valence. And it has it as one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a line counts as a pair of electrons, so there's seven, eight, all right? There's millions of different ways teachers teach this. I tend to lead uh, lean towards, you don't have to know anything except looking, counting, and connecting dots, all right? That'll get you many places. So I want to kind of combine those two examples a little bit. And let's say we had something like CH3F, all right? And I'm gonna start out by saying, oh yeah, I got my carbon. And if you're wondering, how do I know my carbon's gonna go in the middle? There's a cheap rule that says the atom with the lowest electronegativity will be in the middle, except hydrogen. So if you wanna have a cheap rule to go by, the uh, atom with the, oops, lowest electronegativity is the center. And in philosophical terms, the weakest atom has to do the most sharing. The atom that's in the center has to share with everything else around it, and it's gonna be the weakest thing that does that. The strongest atom is not going to do the most sharing because it doesn't have to. The weakest atom is gonna do the most sharing because it doesn't have a choice. All right, what did I do there, blues? <clears throat> it doesn't matter where I put the H's and where I put the F, so I'm just gonna say like hydrogen, one dot, connect the dots. Hydrogen, one dot, connect the dots. Hydrogen, one dot, connect the dots. And then fluorine, I lost that one, there it is. Fluorine, seven dots, connect the dot. It doesn't matter how they're arranged. I mean, you could do something super annoying like fluorine, hydrogen, dot, 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 dot. You can't miss those. Hydrogen, hydrogen. And again, the reason the F has the dots is because it's going to fill both an S and a P, it's gonna get a full octet. Hydrogen only needs to fill S, so it doesn't have those dots. And yes, we have to see them, okay? Now, I'm going to uh, utilize this space right here. I know things are getting a little messy, but let's try a common uh, household cleaning product, ammonia NH3, and see what's the difference between this and this, and it's kind of important. I'm gonna look at my periodic table, nitrogen, group 15, five dots, hydrogen, group one, one dot. All right, so nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five dots, group 15 on the periodic table. Hydrogen, I have three to attach, and I have three bonding locations. That's not a coincidence, right? I had four things to attach, and I had four bonding locations. That's not a coincidence, all right? And if you're wondering why I put the carbon in the center, it had the lowest electronegativity, but also, Hydrogen can't bond to multiple things. Fluorine can't bond to multiple things because they each only had one bonding location. So they can't be in the center, all right? Hydrogen brings one dot. Hydrogen brings one dot. Hydrogen brings one dot. And there we go. What you'll notice is three things attached, one non-bonding pair. And we have to show it there, all right? That non-bonding pair represents an electron domain and it takes up space, right, when you're trying to look at the three-dimensional structure. So it is important that we put it, just like it was important that we showed those dots there. And that's how we get our eight, right? If I didn't put them there, nitrogen would have line is two dots, line is two dots, line is two dots, six dots. And you know what's true about six dots? It's not eight, all right? 
So those two must be shown. And it does matter in the big picture. For now, it doesn't matter if you were to write this like nitrogen, H, 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 right? And I just keep doing that uh, so you realize the arrangement for a Lewis structure doesn't matter at all. All that matters is how many things are attached and how many non-bonding pairs you have, all right? So those are all pretty straightforward examples. I want to look in the next video at some transition examples to multiple bonds, and then we'll see where things go from there.